Hi there, I'm Michael Bovey. Thanks for tuning in to Debt Bites, my YouTube channel where I cover all things debt and credit. Today, Today I'm going to talk about never pay a debt collector myths and misconceptions. Myth number one, never pay a debt collector because you don't owe them any money, you don't have a contract with them, and you never had a contract with them. When your creditor, let's say a bank, Chase Bank, Citibank, Bank of America, you have a credit card with them and you use it, you stop paying it, and after six months generally is when you first will hear from a third party collection agency. The vast majority of the time these collection agencies just work for your bank. It's not about not having a contract with the debt collector that Chase sends your account to. Chase stopped selling debt in 2013, they haven't sold any since then. Discover hasn't sold debt in a decade, Amex never has. Whole bunches of, of banks, Wells Fargo and others, don't sell debt. So you're dealing with a debt collector that they contracted with to try and get you to pay. These are called contingency debt collectors and I have other videos about that up on our YouTube channel. But it's not like you need a contract with a debt collector to suddenly make them valid or your debt real or your debt valid. It's very real. What might be conflated or confused is, is that debt buyers absolutely do buy up debt. Right now, uh, biggest banks selling debt are probably Citibank, um, Synchrony because of all the store cards that they, they service. Here's some examples of you might be involved with a debt buyer contacting you or a debt collector for a debt buyer and you did not have a contract with them, but guess what? When you had your agreement with your bank, the credit card that you used, you stopped paying it. Part of that agreement that most of us never read is that they do have the right to assign or sell your account. And that would be if they were bought out like MBNA was by Bank of America and suddenly now all of us as MBNA account holders were customers of Bank of America. Or it can be where you stop paying your debt and they sold it off to a debt buyer, Cash LLC, and suddenly now we're hearing from those people. Well, no, we didn't have a contract with them, but that doesn't make the debt any less valid. Myth number two, never admit to the debt. Well, here's something else that becomes a little bit conflated because some of the videos out on YouTube might talk about, and even articles um, on, on websites talk about, don't admit your name. So suddenly, don't tell them you're Jim Brown because suddenly now they gotcha, right? No, that's not it. These debts, when they get assigned to debt collectors, it comes with a bunch of information. So they have your social security number. They know more about you than your sister does. They, they know your date of birth. They have your address. They have a whole bunch of information about you, generally from your credit report because all debt collectors have real-time access to your credit report. And so they typically know that you're Jim Brown and they know that you're the Jim Brown they're trying to get money from. There are certainly rare situations where a debt collector just hounds the wrong person um, and sometimes, you know, you get a new cell number and you're hearing from somebody else about a totally different name or, you know, some kind of confusion like that. But when you tell them your name or you even tell them that you had a Citibank account, you're not admitting the debt, okay? What is real? is in some very select states, like a half a dozen. There are instances where if you make a verbal acknowledgement of the debt or a verbal offer to pay a debt, that you are resetting the statute of limitations to sue you in order to collect. And it's very rare. It's actually even in the states that you have that opportunity. Debt collectors can use that. They really don't for all intents and purposes. But it's a legitimate concern in below. I'll have a link to a friend of mine who's in the industry, probably has the best curated, ongoing curated list of all the states and whether or not you can verbally acknowledge a debt to reset the statute of limitations or if it takes a written offer to pay, which is generally what happens. That's why I don't recommend that people say, oh, only do this stuff in writing, only send off a letter in writing. And that's a real concern. You, you really want to do it over the phone before you get it in writing, but that's for another video. So admitting the debt, it, it isn't what people make it out to be. Number three, legally, debt collectors cannot collect from you until they validate the debt. That is false. Debt collectors have a legal obligation to validate a debt when you request it. So in other words, you have a legal right to request that a debt somebody's trying to get you to pay be validated. It's a very low threshold to prove the validation, but they don't have to just come up to you and, and at first contact prove everything. That's not how that works. 
Actually, the best way to validate a debt is to just call your original creditor, let's say Citibank, and say, hey Citibank, do you have my account out with XYZ Debt Collection Agency? And they'll tell you yes. They'll tell you who the agency are that they're using at the time, or if they've sold the debt, who they sold it to, and now you know you're dealing with the correct party. Number four, debt collectors are only in it for the money. Okay, now that's true. I just wanted to throw that one in there. But the fact of the matter is, is that you're only in it for the money too, because if you owed a legitimate debt and didn't pay it, you're trying to preserve your cash because you're trying to meet your bills, put food on your table, keep your kids fed. So in all actuality, it's all about the money, whether it's them or you. Number five, your credit is going to stay hurt whether you pay or don't pay. And that's false. Here's the thing. If you've got unpaid accounts on your credit report already affecting you, and let's say a year's gone by or two years has gone by since you paid them, these are derogatories. These are R9s. I have a video up about what R9 means on your credit report and what it's going to revert to if you resolve it. But depending on what your goal is, resolving that account, if you just have maybe one or two negatives, collection accounts, and several positives, resolving those accounts are going to help you bounce back your credit score and open up your credit opportunities. If you don't resolve them, you're not going to have those opportunities, like getting a home loan. And that's the number one issue that can come from people that now have not paid a debt long enough for it to, they can't be sued on it anymore, but they still have things that they want to do and they have to circle back and resolve debts that they thought they were really just going to let age off of their credit reports because there's no way they're going to get other goals accomplished. So it can improve not just your credit score to resolve a debt, but also your credit opportunities. Now, add to the fact that if you continue to not pay because you don't think you're gonna get any benefit credit-wise, that you're also increasing your risks of being sued for collection, and that can escalate certain things and concerns like wage garnishment, bank account levy, things like that. It's not just about whether or not I'm gonna resolve this debt because I want to improve my credit or my credit options. It's I'm actually eliminating risk by being proactive and resolving something. Number six, making a payment to a debt collector or on a collection account is just going to re-age it so that it stays on your credit report longer or get a fresh seven years. And that's false. Totally incorrect. If you're late on a credit card payment, say for six months, they charge it off, you let it go nine months, a year, 18 months, two years, and you resolve it with a debt collector, it's not going to give it any extra life at all. It's going to be tied if they even reported it separate of your creditor, which many times that's not the case. Your derogatory, your negative, has a seven year shelf life after charge off. And because charge off usually happens after six months and on payment, it's the epitome of seven and a half years of a negative on your credit when you stop paying a credit card, at least in this example. So what you've got is a situation where you pay the creditor or you pay the debt collector years after you stop paying, let's say two years, and it's still gonna come off after five, okay? After five more, so a total of seven. So myth busted. As part of number six, it can't go unsaid that you are creating a situation where if you're calling and you're only making a payment on a debt, that let's say you owe two grand, two years goes by, you haven't paid it, you wanna resolve it, you don't have a thousand bucks to settle with them for less. All you're trying to do is maybe just start like giving them a hundred bucks or they talk you into giving them a hundred bucks and you haven't really resolved anything. That payment does reset the statute of limitations to sue you, not for credit reporting. This has nothing to do, that miss already busted. But when you pay a debt, a partial payment, you're giving them new opportunities to sue you, even sometimes if that statute of limitations has already passed. So we have a video up called Zombie Debt, or What is Zombie Debt? And that's on the screen. Get to know more about how long you can go without paying a debt before it's just a dog that barks and there's no teeth behind it because they can't sue and they can't hurt your credit report anymore. Number seven, debt collectors cannot prove that you owe them in court. Well, that's not true. Here's the situation. When you're sued by your original creditor, they have everything they need to sue you. They have everything they need to prove the debt. And there are major credit card issuers, for example, that use the courts a lot. Capital One, Discover, American Express, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, 
many of your local credit unions, skip any kind of collection activity from collection agencies that we've been talking about here, and sometimes we'll just move right to the courts. And they've got what they need, and they're really going to have an easy enough time of proving their case. The best thing you can do sometimes is drag that out and make it more expensive so they don't want to chase you and or um, come up with a better settlement outcome. But with debt buyers, and this is where I think much of what I find people uh, being misinformed by, is that they have no way to prove that you owe the debt. Once they purchase it, they don't get all of that media. Well, I'm recording this video in the summer of 2017 after last year's OCC guidance, and that's the Office of the, the Comptroller of the Currency who regulates banks. And in that guidance, they want banks to now be able to pass on the media, what the industry calls media, that's proof that you owe the debt. Your last several uh, billing statements, the charge-off statement, things like that, on to the debt purchaser. So it's becoming now, because of policy changes, how banks have to do things, it's becoming much more common for a debt buyer on purchases that they've made in the last couple of years. So if you stop paying your debt somewhere in 2015, it's quite possible that the purchase of your account was done with all of the media that the debt buyer needed to sue you. And they don't have to now go back to the creditor, pay extra money to get the media uh, the, to then go and sue you, which they've always been able to do and are actively doing. But it is now, and for probably evermore, going to be increasingly more difficult for you to defend against a lawsuit from a debt buyer and succeed based on the merits of them not being able to prove, based on your state civil procedure, best evidence rules and all that, to the fact that you owe this debt, that it was your account, that they legitimately purchased it and so forth. So beware. I really enjoy doing these types of videos as far as like user generated reader questions. If you have a question or a concern about a specific debt or your particular circumstances, post about it in the comments below. We'll use those for video ideas. If you have some things that you're worried, you know, you heard this or you're not sure about that and want to bounce it off of me, you're more than welcome to post in the comments below and get feedback about whether it's fact or fiction or urban legend or what have you. See you on the next video. Thank you.